What is up Flutter devs? Today we're gonna to implement the drawing of points in our port of processing to Flutter. So let's go see what it means to draw points in processing. Here we have the usual specification for processing. We're looking at the point procedure. You'll notice in these two examples they show us that drawing a point essentially means drawing a really tiny dot or a really tiny square, but let's read the official description to make sure we know what we're talking about. Draws a point, a coordinate in space at the dimension of one pixel. The first parameter is the horizontal value for the point, the second value is the vertical value for the point, and the optional third value is the depth value. Drawing this point in 3D with the Z parameter requires the P3D parameter in combination with size as shown in the above example. We will take in the optional third parameter, we will not actually make use of it. Use stroke to set the color of a point. This means that a point is technically drawn using the stroke paint. We'll talk in a moment about the implications of that. Point appears round with the default stroke cap of round and square with a stroke cap of, of project, short for, I think, projection. Points are invisible with stroke cap of square. Use point with stroke weight of one or smaller may draw nothing to the screen depending on the graphics settings of the computer. Workarounds include setting the pixel using set or drawing the point using either circle or square. This stuff here at the bottom really doesn't impact us, uh, or I guess that's going to be true no matter how we implement it. Let's talk about this using stroke. This is the color of a point. The first thing we're going to try is we're going to we're going to try drawing a square and a circle and giving it a stroke, but just making them the size of one pixel. We'll see if that works. But the problem is if we draw, if we draw a one pixel square or a one pixel circle and, and it strokes either on the perimeter or around the perimeter, it's going to end up being larger than just one pixel and therefore it isn't really what we want here. The second thing is that the what determines whether it's a square or a circle is the stroke cap. And in fact, there isn't neither of these show a circle. So I'm not even sure what a circle point actually looks like. Because what what is the difference between a square and a circle if you're only filling one pixel? I'm not really sure. We might just not worry about that for now until it comes up somewhere else where we can see the difference. But stroke cap, I don't know if that, if we, if we draw a one pixel square with a stroke cap of round, I think that's still just going to give us a square. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the case. I think that because of the ambiguity here, because there are not enough visual examples for us to see all the different ways this might look or the way it's supposed to look, I think we'll kind of gloss over the stroke cap and the round point. I think we'll just aim to get a one pixel square point implemented. And then later down the road, if we run into use cases where we need something that doesn't quite work, we can come back and refactor and update to do the right thing. My thinking right now is that we will try to draw a one pixel by one pixel square using the stroke paint only and see if that gives us this result. If it doesn't, we may need to create a temporary paint and actually fill a square instead of stroke a square. But let's find out. As always, we're going to begin by writing the tests that we want to support, and then we will implement the code needed to run the tests. There are two examples here, but notice that the second example uses a third dimension. It pushes the point back in the Z index or the Z axis. We're not going to implement the second test. We're just going to implement this first test. Here in our test file, we'll grab an unrelated test, copy it, and then make adjustments. We'll copy the line test example or line example test down here. We will call this point 
example one, we will change the name of the golden file to point example one. We will say s dot point. We will take in an x value and a y value. And there will be an optional z value, but we're not testing for it, and we're going to throw an exception if anybody uses it. Here are the points that we want to draw. Let me copy these over for reference. The first one is 30, 20. As we did in the last video, we're going to use the cascade operator to run multiple operations on our sketch object at one time. Then the second point is 85, 20, then 85, 75, then 30, 75. And the auto formatter collapsed that down all to one line. I don't like that. So I'm going to add these otherwise pointless comments in here to prevent the auto formatter from doing that. This is the test that we want to compile and we want it to produce the same output that we're seeing in the specification. We'll jump over to our implementation of all of our sketch behavior. Here's the line that we implemented in the last video. I'm going to copy that. Points are even simpler or more primitive than lines, so I'm going to define the point method above line. We're going to take in a double, which is actually when we're going to make these named parameters to disambiguate. Double X, double Y, double Z. And we're going to say, if z is not equal to null, throw unimplemented error. 3D point drawing is not yet supported. OK. And we want x and y to be required. Now, what did I say our attempt was going to be here? I said we are going to try to say canvas draw a rectangle rect from center because we know there, the idea of top left, right, and bottom uh, or the idea of giving two corner points doesn't make any sense because the corner points are the same. That's kind of weird. Instead, let's look at the pixel as the center of the rectangle and then the width and height are both one. We'll say rect from center. That center is offset x, y, the width is 1, the height is 1, and then we're going to use the stroke paint. Draw a rectangle at x, y, width of 1, height of 1, with the stroke paint. Now my initial expectation is that this thing is going to be larger than one pixel because we're using the stroke. Maybe I'm wrong about that. If I'm right about that, we're going to have to reevaluate what we're doing here. Let's save that. Our test now compiles. Let's run the test. Update goldens, plain name equals point. Run that. All tests pass. Here it is. Okay, I mean, I, yeah. Difficult to tell. Let's see. I wish we had some some grid lines or something here. Okay, there's the grid. So it is it's too big. It's actually four pixels, not one pixel. And my assumption is that's because as I think that's the case. Yeah. And that's I assume that's because stroke applies to the boundary of a shape, not the inside. So the question becomes, how do we want to handle this? I think for now, maybe we just completely ignore the possibility of circular points. We ignore the, the relevance of the cap. We create a new paint inside the point, inside the point method, which uses the stroke color but applies it as a fill. 
That's what I'm thinking. Let's at least see if that solves the problem or gives us the right visual. Because see, we do, we want the color of the stroke. We just don't want the style to be stroke. I guess an, another thing we could actually do is we could say stroke paint style equals painting style fill. And then we just need to remember to set that right back when we're done. Let's see what that gives us. Let's run the test again and regenerate the golden file. Hmm, that's interesting. For some reason, it looks like it just got lighter. I don't know. Um, let's try for, let's try a different representation of the rectangle. At this point, we're in kind of a debugging mode. I don't know why we got the result that we got. One thought is that maybe by providing the center at this X, Y, and then a width and a height, it's trying to go 0.5 pixels to the left and 0.5 pixels to the right. Maybe that's what's giving us this weird artifact. So let's say rect from... left top with height. So we'll just say the left is X, the top is Y, the width is one, the height is one. Let's see if that gives us anything better. Okay, so that you, based on this grid, that did actually give us a single pixel. So the problem, the at least one of the problems was by saying by basing a one pixel rectangle or square on its center, because it was only one pixel wide, it was doing this half a pixel left, half a pixel right, half a pixel up, half a pixel down, and that resulted in a actually a four pixel representation. Let's also, let's, let's see if we can get away without messing with the style. Let's see if we can go back to a stroke style and still have the result that we want. Nope. So you see, you see now what I'm saying when I talk about the stroke applying to the boundary. Now we're worse than ever. Now we are nine pixels. There's the center pixel, which is the actual kind of inside of the square. And then there's the boundary around the square. We end up with this really weird looking kind of anti-aliased quasi stroke thing. Okay, we'll go back to what we had here. By changing the uh, the stroke style or, or the paint style, we are not actually using the stroke. We're not using the the curve or line around the outside of the shape. And I think what that means, I could be wrong about this, but I it might be the case that the stroke cap no longer has any impact. I don't know if, if the stroke cap impacts the shape of the fill at all where the where the segments join in any event i think this is good enough for now uh, let me regenerate the original the original successful test i mean we do have what is shown here in the spec and i don't know 
how much work people are going to do with single pixel points. I think it's reasonable to say that we support it by just implementing the square version. When any of you or anybody else comes up with a need for circular points or when the stroke cap somehow becomes relevant to what you're doing, you can file an issue or let me know and we'll take another look. But for now, I think this is a sufficient success. I think we can say, at least for now, again, that we have implemented drawing of points. And so after this, we will work on arc and ellipse. I think those are the two remaining things in the category of 2D primitives. And then we can say that we support all 2D primitives. So I'll see you in the next video.